Joining me, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist and host of Behind the Curtain with Jack Berkman. Catch him every Saturday night on the Radio American Network and Sunday afternoons at 2 on WMAL in Metro D.C. Also, Mark Levine, Democratic strategist, a former top lawyer to Congressman Barney Frank and talk show host on Pacifica Radio. Still making news, President Obama's State of the Union address. America, for all that we have endured, for all the grit and hard work required to come back, for all the tasks that lie ahead, know this, the shadow of crisis has passed and the State of the Union is strong. This was the first time Obama faced a Republican-controlled Congress, but he didn't hold back. I have no more campaigns to run. My only agenda, I know because I won both of them. That's right, in your face. Mark, let's start with you. Many analysts were expecting Obama to be a lame duck president in his last two years. Did you get that sense from his State of the Union? Not in the least. I think he's got a lot of fight in him. I think he stood up for democratic values. Frankly, I wish I'd heard a speech like this right before the election in 2014. Hmm. I think we would have done a lot better. When the Democrats ran away from Obama, they lost seats. These are the values America stands for, and I was glad to see the president stand up for them. Jack, you thought he looked a bit worn, huh? Oh, yeah. I, Morris, this, was, this had to be the worst State of the Union I've heard in my lifetime. And I don't say that for partisan reasons. So many just cheesy lines. That line at the end, we're all a family. That sounded like something from a sitcom. This poor man needs new speechwriters. The speech, all things aside, was just terrible. Obama has absolutely no chance of passing this agenda. I'm shocked that he... Obama should learn from Clinton in the 90s. You pivot, you triangulate, you compromise, you try to co-opt the Republican agenda and beat them at their own game. This guy's doubling down in blackjack. He wants to double down. He's moving even further to the left. There's no political sense in it. There's no substantive sense in it. I feel bad for this guy. I think of the movie Birdcage when he said, we are family, let's bring in the dancers. The point we, is, we, sisters, are, we family. are family, let's do it. Yeah, I, Jack, do you think Obama stands a chance of getting anything done on his agenda? A Accomplished what no. we both part, you, we can't agree on anything. You I, think? The only really nothing. I mean, this this business. The whole speech, Morris, was like uh, it was almost like. Uh, well, do you have a credit card bill? Send it in. The government will pay for it. You need your kids' college paid? Just mail the bill in. We're pay for it. You want to pay for your auto insurance? Mail it in. The government will pay for it. It's all. We're all fat and happy. The only thing I saw in the whole speech on which there could be any bipartisan cooperation um, and really have and just have any chance at all was Obama very subtly said for the Keystone Pipeline issue, we're going to compromise with infrastructure. He said, why just do the pipeline? Let's make a broader infrastructure bill. My suspicion is Mitch McConnell will pick up on that. You see the deal emerging. Democrats get infrastructure. Republicans get the pipeline. Uh -huh. Probably happening. Mark, what kind of agreements between the parties? Do you see I, I some? Think, I think there may be some trade deal. I think there's some room on tax negotiations. I mean, I think Democrats and Republicans agree that as long as you make corporations pay their taxes, we can lower the tax rate. Right now, three quarters of corporations pay zero U.S. taxes, and of course, that's one of the reasons why we, you know, we've had deficits. But the main point of the speech, I think, was to let people know the good news. If you hadn't noticed, the stock market's at record highs, unemployment is at record lows, the deficit's at record no lows. No thanks to the, the president. The stimulus worked, and the Republicans just don't want to admit the, the stimulus good news around worked. Them. Oh my God! So it worked me, dramatically. Let well. me get this straight, Mark. Your argument is that the stimulus bill from 2009 is what makes the stock market at 18,000, even though. It really pumped no money into the economy. It really just paid down state debt. Well, let's it see if it works in Europe. That's the next big question <laughs> on the agenda. Oh, speaking of and national policy. international policy, Obama also touched on the Iranian nuclear negotiations. There are no guarantees that negotiations will succeed. And I keep all options on the table to prevent a nuclear run. But new sanctions passed by this Congress at this moment in time will all but guarantee that diplomacy fails, alienating America from its allies, making it harder to maintain sanctions, and ensuring that Iran starts up its nuclear program again. It doesn't make sense. And that's why I will veto any new sanctions bill that threatens to undo this progress. 
But even as the president was saying those words, House Speaker John Boehner had already invited Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to address Congress without notifying the White House. Mark, what's your take on this breach in protocol? Well, I mean, it's clearly rude. It was not something that's appropriate. You, if, if Speaker Boehner wanted to invite Prime Minister Netanyahu, he should have informed the president. They could have issued a joint invitation. It was, I think, just trying to slap the president in the face. That being said, I think it's great that Netanyahu's coming. I think Iran is a real threat. And interestingly, I think that Democrats and Republicans think that oh, President Obama hasn't been tough enough on, on Iran. So I think he's got some real battles there to fight. But Boehner didn't need to slap him in the face. It didn't serve any purpose. The President, Morris, has slapped Israel in the face. He's turned his back on one from the day he got into office, even when he was a senator, he made it clear he would give no support to the state of Israel. He is determined to coddle radical Islam. He believes that radical Islam can be coddled. The other thing is, you know, and you have David Cameron from the UK calling around, lobbying on this. Both of them feel that it is inevitable that Iran uh, can and will have a nuclear program. They want the world to accommodate and accept this reality. Republicans say no. They're beginning to strategize. I'll tell you, if you want to make some news here, I'll tell you what I think John Boehner might be thinking. He and Mitch McConnell are thinking, let's do a federal statute that sells planes, maybe some stealth bombers, some joint strike fighters to the Israelis and let them take care of this problem. It's time to force the president's hand that could be in the works. I think there'd be a lot of support in Congress for that. Look, Bob Menendez, solid Democratic senator from New Jersey, and we yeah. saw a cutaway could, could not be any, any stronger on the issue of preventing Iran yeah. from having nuclear weapons. So I actually think Democrats and Republicans are more united on this. And I do think President Obama needs to negotiate more toughly and, well, frankly, uh, economic sanctions agree. Maybe the right way to go. The, the White House is timing it as long as this doesn't happen on their watch. And that's, that's the bottom line right there. After the State of the Union, a flurry of Republicans gave their reaction to the speech including Senator Rand Paul, who proposed a major change. The best thing that could happen is for us to once and for all limit the terms of all politicians. We already limit the president to two terms. I think we should put limits on the terms of Congress and infuse our government with fresh ideas. Some politicians have been in office for 50 years. There are even some skeletons with cobwebs, and they're still voting. Jack, are term limits a good idea? Oh, sure they are. We supported them in 94. It's my party that turned their back on them. I fault Republicans for that. Uh, term limits are an excellent idea. I strongly advise, there are issues with constitutionality, but I strongly advise Congress to pass, to enact term limits. I don't know what the number of years should be for House and Senate, but we have to begin that process. Uh, term limits are a great idea, Morris. If you don't like your member of Congress, there's an easy way to get rid of them. Vote him or her out of office. The idea that we have to take the good with the bad and throw out people who really are good and doing the right thing because most of us don't like other members of Congress, it doesn't make any sense. It limits our democratic oh, choices. Oh, you know, Mark, it's easy to say that, but when you look at guys like John Dingell, uh, he had the seat, his father had the seat, now the wife has the seat. The problem with that, you can say that, but here's the problem. Look at Bush and Clinton who are running again. You Jeff have Bush trouble. and Hillary Clinton. Oh, that's right, that's we, right. We have, we have Dynastic families. I well, don't like it any more than you do, but it's up to the voters to change see, the, their minds. The, the problem of that, though, like with the Dingles, when you have people holding seats for a hundred years, how do you distinguish that from monarchy? You can't. That becomes like the British royal family. Uh, we You're giving the voters no credit, Jack. Well, let's talk about the, the upcoming race. Before we go, let's talk about that race to the White House. Republican Senator Marco Rubio is adding his name to a growing list of possible contenders. Among them, Mitt Romney, who surprised everyone by saying he's considering a third run. Mark, are you surprised? at Romney's announcement and could he get the GOP nomination? I don't think Romney's even running. I, I honestly think that he made his announcement so he could go meet with Jeb Bush, give him his two cents and pretend he's still important. As a Democrat, I hope he runs. I hope he gets the nomination. There's no one I'd rather see run against, but I honestly don't think he's even running. I think this is just a trial balloon to seem important and then he'll fade away. Jack, who would you like to see get the nomination? Well, I wanted my friend Paul Ryan of almost 30 years. I wanted Paul in there, but Paul just doesn't want to do the work and I understand that. I might not either. He's got three little children and I know how that goes. He was the guy. Uh, I think Romney's in. I think Jeb Bush is in. I don't think there's any question those two are coming like freight trains. Mitt Romney has an awful lot of ambition. I think people underestimate him. We got to see those two will battle for the moderate mantle, the establishment mantle. We just have to see who the conservatives will be. I think Rick Santorum can be strong. Oh, I, think Ted, on, I think Ted Cruz can be strong and I think Rand Paul, if he's able to work out this thing in Kentucky and fight off Allison Grimes and get the Kentucky Supreme Court to go his way, 
Clay being on both ballots, I think he can be strong. Mark my words, it's Jeb Bush versus Hillary Clinton, and our next president will be Hillary Clinton. There you go. We're making news again. Mark Levine, Democratic strategist, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist, the best political on TV, panel on TV. Thanks to you both. Thank you, Thanks, guys. Mark. Thanks, Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Morris. Thanks, Jack.